Okay, we just got done setting up sheet 102. Now you'll notice I've got sheet 102 open and I have sheet 101 open. Now we're going to go back into 101 because we need to make a couple of design changes that might even impact our design. So I'm in sheet 101. I'm going to go to model space. Uh, I'm going to start with the offset command. And I'm going to offset both of my vertical grid lines 12 feet to the inside. Ooh, and it won't let me do it because my layer is locked. Yeah. So I need to come to my list of layers. I'm only looking at my new ones. I need to edit my existing ones. If you need a layer that is not visible in the list, but you know the layer exists in your drawing, open up your layer dialog manager or your layer properties. And if these filters here on the left-hand side are also are uh, also control the visibility of what's happening here. <clears throat> if you can see, I've got all my existing layers have been locked. So if you need to select multiple layers, there's a, a few different ways to do it. If you click on a layer, obviously you can modify one thing at a time. If you hold the control key down on the uh, then it will allow you to select and deselect. So my control key is remaining pushed down on my keyboard. The other option is if you select one item and then hold your shift key, then it will then then you will select everything in between those that that the, this click and the previous one. If you need to undo one or two, then you can hold down your control key and you can unselect a few of them. But right now all of my existing layers are locked. I'm just going to unlock all of them because I need to make some changes. And I'm also going to make my, well, I can change them all after the fact. It's going to be easy enough. Okay. There we go. Now we've got all my layers have been unlocked. So back again, offset. Set my offset distance to 12 feet and offset my vertical grid lines 12 feet inside reason that I'm doing this is because the plan does not show any structural beams. <clears throat> structural beams are going to exist here. <clears throat> I'm throwing them in even though they're not included in the original documentation if for no other reason than to make us think, hey, this is something that could affect our design. Alright, I'm going to use my offset command again and I'm going to set the distance to, what did I say? I believe it was nine. Yes. And I'm going to offset my horizontal grid lines nine inches inwards. <clears throat> okay. I'm done with that. I'm going to offset my outermost vertical grids 12 inches inwards. Okay, offset one more time and set that distance to six inches. And these innermost grid lines, I'm going to offset them to either side six inches. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to come up and select the layer isolate and I'm just going to isolate this layer. Now all these inside lines, all these lines that I just created, I need to highlight them and I need to change what layer they're on. Okay, those are the objects I'm, so I'm changing. Come up to my list of layers, and they're going to change to A floor overhead dash E, but I'm also going to turn that layer on <clears throat> because I want to click on 
this guy, which is turn layers off, and I'm going to turn my column grid layer off. Do I want to turn your current layer off? Yes. So I need to clean all this up. And I'm just going to need to use the trim command. I want all my objects to cut all my other objects. And the only reason that I turned everything off, oh, that's awesome. The only thing, reason that I turned everything off is because I want to make this easier. Now, why didn't it let me do that? There we go. Now you can use the fillet command if you wanted to. You could trim all these out individually. You could break things. There's, there's a lot of different ways you could do this, but this is the shape that I want that's left over. Now that this is done, I want to restore all my layers. Click layer, unisolate, and it'll bring everything back. <clears throat> okay, now one of the things that we don't have shown yet is when I go to my floor plan, and this is my floor plan sheet, and I do a print preview, and that's PRE at the command prompt, or I can come up right here and do plot, because, the, because there is an option in the plot dialog to say preview. So show me what this is going to look like when it prints. This is not actually printing anything, but show me what it looks like when it prints. If I zoom in, I do not see a distinction between information that's new versus information that's existing. We're going to do that now. <clears throat> now, the basic principle that I'm showing you here is I'm combining a couple of things. The first of which, okay, I don't need that dialog. I'm going to click cancel and make it go away or escape on the keyboard. Most companies will have some color or colors that are reserved and will print gray. A few other companies will have colors that are reserved and will print in various thicknesses of gray. <clears throat> what we did when we set up, when we used our page setup, the pin table that were used, this monochrome, that table controls what layer equals what line weight, whether you're using line weights that way, or what colors will print in, or, or yeah, what colors on screen will print out as what color. Um, right now, the way that it's set up is everything is set, every AutoCAD index color, and I'll get to that in a moment, but every AutoCAD index color will print as black, except true colors. Um, and they'll print in the same color that they are on the screen. That's what this monochrome is all about. But the basic principle is the color, there are certain colors that will print gray, and that's the, 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 the general concept that I want to introduce here. But I'm going to set up a color override that applies only to this viewport. So I'm going to double click to enter my viewport. I'm going to open my layer manager. I'll highlight my filter for existing to remain. Now you can see I've got on or off. I can freeze them in, in, in I can freeze them in the viewport. I can lock them. The layer can print or not print, and then I've got color and then a line type. And then you'll notice that I've got a repeat of all these things right over here. I have a viewport color override. That's what the second uh, row of color swatches is. I can also override the line type only in the viewport. You'll notice here that I have line weight, and then there's VP line weight. I can change the line weight of objects on that layer just for this viewport. Well, right now, all I'm going to do is change the color of my existing elements, but only in this viewport. So I'm going to highlight all my layers, so I'll click the bottom one, click the bottom layer, and this is, I should remember, I should be looking at existing to remain over here. So click the bottom, come up and click the top one, so I've got all my layers have been selected. Now we don't want to change the color swatch that says color, we want to come over here to where it says VP, if you expand that out, you'll see it says VP color. Right now it just says VPC because I've got a small monitor. I'm going to click any one of these color swatches. There we go. And instead of index color, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on true color. Now those of you who are familiar with Illustrator or Photoshop or something like that, this is going to look kind of familiar. I'm going to change my RGB color down here to 168, 168, 168. At least I think that's the right one. 
Yep. So that's my RGB color, and it's sort of a mid-tone gray kind of color. I will click OK, and you'll see that I have the color of the layer is here, but my viewport color is still all gray. Now you'll notice, it's kind of hard to see right now, but there is a little indicator over here for the layer that, that indicates there is an override that has been applied to this layer. There are other ways to have it show up and sometimes it, it sometimes these settings depend on the horsepower of the computer that you're using. That's why things are going so slow right now. I'm going to go back and click on all and give me all used layers. So all the layers that are actually being used in this file. Now what I want to do is there are certain layers that I do not want to see in this in this viewport. I might still want to see them in the drawing, but I do not want to see them in this viewport. And that is the layers for things happening overhead, so that's a floor overhead, and furniture. These layers I do not want to see in this viewport. So instead of clicking the off button, which will turn them off everywhere, or the freeze button, which will turn them off everywhere, I only want to click the viewport freeze button, which will freeze them in this viewport. All right. <clears throat> There we go. So this is what I want the viewport to look like. I'm going to double click outside of my viewport and I'm going to come down over here and click on model space as I need to get back to model space. You notice that all that data is still there. Everything is the same color. Everything is the color that it needs to be. You know, I can see both the new the new ceiling and the existing ceiling and the and the furniture. So I'll click back on floor plan. You'll notice that things are gray. So when I go to print preview, so that's just PRE at the command prompt and press return, it'll run and it'll create a preview of what this is supposed to look like. And now when I zoom in, you will notice that my existing information to remain is gray. So now I have a visual cue that makes a differentiation between new information or new uh, walls, new things in this plan that the contractor is going to be manipulating versus gray things, which he's not going to manipulate. So there we go. Yes, that is uh, viewport overrides and uh, some layer manipulation. And uh, we're going to be doing something kind of similar in the other file in the next video.